dreams of living in the sky. Would it be a traditional house? A castle? An immense city, tall or round? These dreams are of a land life transported into the sky. But what of a life with the wind and the clouds, enjoying the birds? No longer bound by the lie of the land and the line of the horizon? What would that look like? Longer stays in the sky tend to be the domain of balloons and airships. But the longest anyone has remained in the sky, the troposphere, was the seven weeks Robert Tim and John Cook spent flying over the Nevada desert in their Cessna 175. Since then, balloons have focused on setting records. The highest trip, Stratolab 5. Crossing the Atlantic, Double Eagle 2. Going around the world, Bretling Orbiter 3. In all of these, the living module provided the bare minimum. The great Zeppelins of the 1920s and 30s came closest to providing a home in the sky. While previous living spaces in the sky were mission appropriate, could one actually imagine living in one of these spaces? For my brief, I adopted a volume the size of Airstream's smallest caravan, around 22 cubic meters. But would a floating habitation be tethered or free-floating following the wind? The birds gave me the answer. Some, like the frigate, spend their entire lives in the air. Most live close to the ground. And some, like the ostrich, never fly. Initially, the habitation could be suspended from a bridge or overpass. Then, tethered flight could be tried before exploring the possibilities of a floating home in free flight. In the age of the box, one looks to one's sight for clues to the shape of the box that will become a building. Looking to the sky, I saw hints of other morphologies. Clumps of snow and drops of rain are spherical in shape. as are the nest of weaver birds. And so I took my box and added circles and more circles, creating a sphere. My first model was made of wire at a scale of one to 20. But I still had a box. I still imagined myself on land gazing out at the horizon. And so I reoriented the openings. The horizon is still visible, but it is no longer in the center of the frame. To understand this space, I recruited Aozora, Furimena, and Krepsis School to assist in building a 1 to 5 model. Aozora at 1.8 meters is my same height. The first challenge facing me was the frame. To find something strong enough but flexible enough was a challenge. In the end, I bundled three dowels together, bending them individually, then attaching them to create the structural ring. As three circles overlap at the joint, the elements are splayed to give a flatter joint. With no floor, there's no furniture in the traditional sense. Two platforms divide the volume into three, allowing access to the full height of the space. The platforms are large enough to sleep on. In addition, Inside and out, there's a network of 100 millimeter rings covering the whole structure. Spaced every one and a half to two meters apart, there's always a ring within reach to grab, step on, or attach something to. A seat can also be attached, creating a great expanse of activity points, both inside and out. 
Through the center of the space is a series of three adjustable working surfaces, allowing one to maintain multiple projects and work environments going in a small area. The central support also doubles as a light. If the central area is needed, the surfaces can always be moved out of the way for other activities, whether it is crepuscules, pole dancing, or Aozora's sky aerobics. When I first explored balloons, there were stories of ice caked ropes and sub zero temperatures. As I read further, I realized they were flying at altitudes of 7 to 8 kilometers in the middle of winter, with the trip actually bordering the Arctic and Antarctic. Of course, it was cold. Floating below 3 kilometers, an amazing environment opens in all directions. Six large portals cover 70% of the Sushab's surface. Each portal can open upwards or downwards, changing one's relation with the surrounding sky. A variety of configurations are possible. At times of cold or stormy weather, one may want to close all the portals. Twelve domed windows still allow external views in all directions. On a rainy day, or when one is close to the ground or ocean, one might go for an all portals up configuration, allowing for the maximum connection with the surface below. In contrast, an all portals down configuration would increase the horizontal surface space by around 18 square meters. A third configuration, with upper portals up and lower portals down, could create a bi-level effect. It is an experimental space to explore new ways of interacting. The skin of the Sushav is layered. The external layers need to be weather resistant and insulating. The inner layer of the portal is made of webbing allowing one to walk on it. The fixed panels between the portals are covered with colored felt. I would envisage over time these panels would be embroidered and decorated with objects from one's travels. Storage such as these two and a half liter bottles could be attached anywhere in the interior. A shower system, toilet system, and cooking facilities a number of systems are still in development. As much as I've enjoyed working with Aozora, Crepuscule, and Fudimena, I want to build a full-size suspended habitation and to have it in the sky, not in my living room. I want to get my own sky name. Come along with me on this adventure 